A combination of a Euclidean function and an integral domain is called a Euclidean domain. So basically, an integral domain which has at least one Euclidean function is called a Euclidean domain. So let's find out what integral domains and Euclidean functions are. Let f be a function defined on an integral domain R whose domain contains all the non-zero elements of R and codomain contains all the non-negative integers. Then the function f is said to be a Euclidean function if it satisfies two conditions. First, for some elements a and b in R where b is non-zero, there exist elements R and q such that a is equal to b times q plus R where either r equal to 0 or the value of the function at the point r is less than the value of the function at the point b. And second, for all non-zero elements a and b in r, the value of the function at the point a is less than or equal to the value of the function at the point a times b. An integral domain on which we can define at least one Euclidean function is called a Euclidean domain. Let's take a look at an example. If an ideal of a ring R is generated by a single element, then the ideal is said to be a principal ideal. For example, in the ring of all integers, the ideals containing the multiples of 2, 3, 4, 5 and so on are generated by the single elements 2, 3, 4, 5 and so on respectively. So all these different ideals of Z are principal ideals. In fact, every ideal in the ring of integers is a principal ideal. Now this is something that leads us to a whole new concept in ring theory, the principal ideal domain. An integral domain in which every ideal is a principal ideal is called a principal ideal domain. Since the ring of all integers is an integral domain and every ideal of the ring of integers is a principal ideal, so the ring of all integers is a principal ideal domain. Here are a few more examples of principal ideal domains. The ring of polynomials over integers is not a principal ideal domain. For example, the polynomial 2 plus x is a polynomial over integers, but it's not generated by only a single element. In fact, it's generated by the two elements 2 and x, and so it's not a principal ideal. 
Hence, the ring of polynomials over integers is not a principal ideal domain. Before moving on to the next section, here's a quick look at the associates of a ring. Two elements A and B of a commutative ring R are said to be associates if and only if one can be expressed as unit times of the other. For example, in the ring of all integers, the integer 3 can be expressed as a product of unit times 3 and unit times negative 3. And therefore, 3 is an associate of 3 and negative 3. Similarly, the integer 5 can be expressed as a product of unit times 5 and unit times negative 5. And so 5 is an associate of 5 and negative 5. In the ring of polynomials over integers, the polynomial x minus 2 can be expressed as a product of unit times x minus 2 and unit times negative x minus 2. And so x minus 2 is an associate of x minus 2 and negative x minus 2. Similarly, x minus 3 can be expressed as a product of unit times x minus 3 and unit times negative x minus 3. So x minus 3 is an associate of x minus 3 and negative x minus 3. A textbook definition of a unique factorization domain looks something like this. Let's just straight away try to understand the concept of a unique factorization domain with the help of an example. Let's take the ring of all integers. Let's pick any random integer, say 15. The following are the four different expressions of 15 as a product of a unit and irreducible elements. The number of elements in all these expressions are the same. So the first condition of a unique factorization domain is satisfied. Also, since 3 is an associate of 3 and negative 3, and 5 is an associate of 5 and negative 5, so the second condition of a unique factorization domain is also satisfied. Similarly, the integer 7 can be expressed as a product of a unit and irreducible elements in the following ways. The number of elements in both these expressions are the same, and 7 is an associate of negative 7. And so both the conditions of a unique factorization domain are satisfied. And hence, the ring of all integers is a unique factorization domain. We now take the ring of all polynomials over integers. Let's randomly pick any polynomial over an integer. Say x square minus 5x plus 6. The following are the four different expressions of x squared minus 5x plus 6 as a product of a unit and irreducible elements. Clearly, the number of elements in all these expressions are the same and all the non-units are associates of each other. And so just like in the previous example, the ring of all polynomials over z is also a unique factorization domain. Let's take the ring of all polynomials over square root of negative 5. The two expressions of 6 which belongs to the ring of all polynomials over square root of negative 5 have the same number of elements. But here 2 is not an associate of 1 plus square root of negative 5 or 1 minus square root of negative 5. Similarly, 3 is also not an associate of 1 plus square root of negative 5 or 1 minus square root of negative 5. And so the second condition of a unique factorization domain is not satisfied. And so the ring of all polynomials over square root of negative 5 is not a unique factorization domain.